Hello, I'm Darren McGee and welcome to my mental health information and awareness channel. Today's topic is having another look at the narcissistic family, what I often describe as the cult of the narcissistic family. Now, I'm going to look today at why I think it's like a cult, okay? So, as with everything, there are always behaviours and characteristics involved um, that, that can inform. So, Let's have a look at them, okay? Number one, in a narcissistic family, you have uh, you have a parent, you have uh, parents, matriarch or patriarch, sometimes both, um, the worshipful leader, okay? This is someone who must be worshipped, must be obeyed at all times. And there is a peck in order, there is a hierarchy. Uh, the children are given different roles. So let's have a look at some of those characteristics that make it look like a cult, okay? So number one, there are negative messages, often conflicting messages. And these can be both spoken and unspoken. Um, for example, you're not good enough. You should have tried harder. Why can't you be more like him? Oh, look at what he did, he did better than you, and so on. These would be examples of spoken messages. Unspoken messages um, could be disapproving, angry looks, being ignored, approval, being withheld, you know, an achievement not being recognized. These would be unspoken negative messages. And as would be said earlier, this would be like a kind of neglect, if you will. Uh, it can be turned on, it can be turned off at will. There is a lot of do what I say, not as I do. Don't you dare lie to me, when in fact, you know, the child is, is living a lie, the, the whole setup is a lie. Don't you dare throw a tantrum when that parent can fly into a narcissistic rage at just the drop of a hat. The children are being taught that they are being loved conditionally. Sometimes they don't even know what those conditions are. They just fear not reaching because of those negative messages. And it doesn't matter how hard they try to earn that regard. Sometimes the most they will ever earn is not to be shouted at or humiliated. Behaviour number two, there's a lot of unkind humour. The children or the partner or whatever, they're often made fun of. They suffer embarrassment. And the purpose of this, this humour is to inflict feelings of shame. Shame through sarcasm, scorn, jokes with jags. And the other family members, um, particularly siblings for example, they laugh as well. They laugh to gain the approval from the abuser. But it's not just approval that they're looking for, it's also out of fear, fear that that may be turned on them. So the victim is left feeling humiliated, but also afraid to show any pain out of shame. They are taught to believe there is something wrong with them for not liking the way they feel because of how they're being treated. And it's often, it's often given with a little bit of a caveat, it's only a joke, you're too sensitive. Which leads me on to behaviour number three. There is a lack of empathy. There's no understanding. The children, indeed the partner as well, they are taught, as I said, that love is conditional. They have to earn it, but they never will. And they must avoid the parent's displeasure by being a particular way, doing a particular thing. You know, children are seen, not heard. Don't you dare answer me back. You did that deliberately. Sometimes there's even threats. You know, any more of that, I'm going to put you in a home. There's a lot of guilt tripping. How dare you after all I've done for you? I'm your mother. I'm your father. You have to respect me. The Bible says you have to do it. I'm going to tell the priest. I'm going to tell the pastor. And on and on it goes. There's never any understanding or any acknowledgement of what the child might actually be experiencing or going through. The parent that 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 matriarch, that patriarch, they are typically judgmental. They show little to no empathy, no understanding. Nothing less than perfect is acceptable. So I often say, the phrase I heard, I often use it a lot. Perfect parents have perfect children. Number four, there are unclear boundaries. As the children's emotional needs and feelings are not being met, not even being considered to be important, it's like they're being told, you're okay when I'm okay. That is the underlying message from the parent. Or if it's in the case of the, the enabler, the other parent, it could be, you know, we're okay when they're okay, so don't do anything that causes them distress. 
The children, they are taught that they are responsible for the parent's distress, but the parent has nothing to do with theirs. So the children learn to fear disapproval through the rage, the guilt and the shaming. And the child's right to privacy, even as they grow up as adults, it is not respected, but the parents must be at all times. You know, things like you needn't bother thinking. You have to be back here by nine o'clock. You know, even if they're maybe in their 20s or 30s, you know, the child doesn't learn the difference between love, respect and fear. In fact, in fact, um, I think it's quite common for a child in a narcissistic family to believe that respect means obedience. Number five, feelings. Feelings are not acknowledged or respected. The only feelings that are ever discussed are those of the matriarch or the patriarch. And as narcissists, when you think about it, they are emotionally dysregulated. So these are only ever really feelings of approval or disapproval, joy or rage. Children in these families, their, their feelings are never discussed other than to be, say, ridiculed or to be punished. Other than that, the feelings are ignored. They're certainly not respected. They are not taught how to process and regulate how they feel. They're not taught to allow those feelings to inform them. They are taught instead to suppress them. It's the parents' feelings that are important. It is up to the children to suppress theirs, put their second place and serve the parent. Number six, there is a lack of communication, a lack of real communication. Because the communication in narcissistic families is usually through triangulation as opposed to direct, open and honest. The narcissistic parent, if you will, creates a house full of flying monkeys. Now I've made videos on flying monkeys and what they are and their roles and so on if you want to have a look at that okay but one thing may be said to one of the children knowing that it's going to reach the person that it's meant for rather than just confront that person directly and that passive aggression that creates mistrust and tension among the children it keeps them divided any communication that is direct it comes out as either rage or pity me look at what you've done which leads me on to behaviour number seven, divide and conquer. As previously said, um, the, the behaviours create mistrust and division. They compare the partner and the children to each other unfavourably. They favour one over the other. The narcissist teaches them to compete for approval. The golden child, for example, and the scapegoat, among other roles, they begin to form. But as far as the outside world is concerned, though they are happy, loving and united, they are a loyal family, which leads me on to the last behaviour, and that is secrets and shame. As with all cults, there are a lot of secrets. Ultimately, the narcissistic family as a whole hides a lot of shame, hides anything that is seen as less than perfect. After all, image is everything. Hence, there are a lot of secrets. Now, the parents may insist on attending church regularly, they are upstanding members of the community, they perform generous acts um, for other people, they, the world sees them as wonderful. But the emotional neglect, the coercion of the children, the treatment of the partner, that's hidden. The message to the outside world is, we're good, we're happy, we are bigger, we are better than others. The children are taught to say and believe that everything is marvellous and to smile for the public, to do wonderful kind things, to do the best they can. However, indoors they are taught things like, whether it's openly, whether it's covertly, you know, what are others going to think of you? What are they going to say about you? How dare you shame me like that? It's a way of instilling fear. So they are eight behaviours, characteristics present in a narcissistic family. Behaviours and characteristics that I think makes it look and seem like a cult to the outside world. Now, perhaps I've missed a few. Perhaps there's a few you'd like to share. Please use the comment box below. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel for future updates on mental health related topics. Until next time, thanks for watching.